Hello everybody. Dear colleagues, Department of Endocrinology, Tbilisi State Medical University presents the second part of the lecture, Physiology and Pathology of the Hypothalamic Pituitary Complex. Lecture is given by the head of the Endocrinology Department of the Tbilisi State Medical University, Professor David Metravelli. Pituitary anterior lobe deficiency in childhood and adolescence. Causes of pituitary anterior lobe deficiency in childhood and adolescence. There are different causes, but we can divide it into parties. Pituitary causes, such as pituitary adenoma, pituitary cyst, pituitary surgery, infiltrative disease, for example, lymphocytic hypophysitis or infarction or apoplexy, primary empty cell syndrome, metastatic disease to the cell. And the second part is the hypothalamic causes. For example, it's a mouth lesion, uh, mouth lesion, uh, for example, craniopharyngioma, radiation in, for brain malignancy, for example, infiltrative lesion, sarcoidosis, for example, and trauma with cool base fracture, infection, uh, for example, uh, viral encephalitis. Manifestation may be different in case of barn hypopituitarism and selective pituitary gonotrophic deficiency. For here in this uh, picture, we can see in the right side person who, uh, who has uh, hypogonadism because of uh, gonadotrop uh, uh, deficiency of gonadotrophins, but in the left side we see a patient with the pan hypopituitarism with pituitary dwarfism, and uh, this person has deficiency of growth hormone and gonadotrophic hormones also. Combination. Uh, here we can see the algorithm of diagnosis of short stature, and in this algorithm, it's very important um, uh, parts. Uh, I mean, uh, it's very important oxological characteristics initially. Yeah, they may be um, uh, low, uh, for example, uh, velocity or growth. Growth uh, uh, temporal velocity uh, when it's uh, less than one standard deviation and uh, uh, height uh, uh, is less than 2.5 standard deviation for age. Uh, the, another group may be when height velocity is the more than zero standard deviation and height is the more than two standard deviation. And the next group, where the uh, head velocity is the uh, one to uh, minus one to zero standard deviation, and uh, height when it's uh, uh, among uh, minus two to minus two point five standard deviation. The diagnosis, uh, diagnostic taxes will be different. For example. When uh, head velocity is uh, less than one, minus one standard deviation and uh, height uh, is uh, less than uh, minus 2.5 standard deviation for age, it should be exclude the um, uh, pathologies such as hypothyroidism, systemic disease, malnutrition, and uh, uh, chromosomal abnormalities. In the case when uh, there is a head velocity more than zero standard deviation and height is the more than minus two standard deviation, uh, it, uh, probably may be uh, normal. In case when uh, head velocity is the minus one to zero standard deviation and the height is the, um, uh, among uh, minus two to point minus 
2.5 standard deviation, uh, this patient uh, uh, needs close observation for other causes. When uh, tests for, uh, to exclude the hypothyroidism, systemic disease, malnutrition, and chromosome abnormalities are positive, such persons need specific treatment. When these tests are negative, we should make blood, uh, blood test for IGF-1 and IGF-1, uh, uh, BP-3. IGF BP3, it's a uh, insulin-like growth factor 1 and insulin-like growth factor uh, binding protein 3. If it is low, uh, this uh, indicates that we should make a basal test for growth hormone. So uh, growth uh, estimation of growth hormone, uh, basal data of growth hormone without any uh, provocative testing. If uh, uh, these um, uh, tests um, uh, is uh, basal uh, growth uh, hormone may be normal, and if the uh, basal growth hormone is normal, we should uh, uh, do the provocative test. Uh, and in this test, if peak elevation of growth hormone is less than 10 nanogram per milliliter, it indicates that patient has classic growth hormone deficiency, and uh, such patients need growth hormone treatment. If uh, the peak of uh, growth hormone in, uh, during testing is more than 10 nanogram per milliliter, it indicates that patient may have uh, some problem, dysfunction of growth hormone and IGF axis. And uh, it seems that patient has growth hormone insufficiency, or idiopathic short stature, and partial growth hormone insensitivity. So uh, this uh, patient consider the growth hormone treatment. If basal growth hormone uh, estimation give uh, abnormal results, it means that uh, these uh, patients need uh, growth hormone, uh, have growth hormone insensitivity syndrome, and if it is possible, uh, the IGF-1 treatment is indicated. The diagnosis, uh, as we see, uh, is based on a combination of the following. Short stature, uh, that is inappropriate for the parental height, the subnormal growth rate, height velocity is below 25 centile, and association with other pituitary hormone deficiency, and in multiple pituitary hormone deficiency, and growth delay confirmed by a delayed skeletal maturation, born age. Clinical and all imaging evidence of a structural disorder of the hypothalamus pituitary axis. This includes previous cranial irradiation, exclusion of other genetic, psychosocial, and systemic causes of growth failure, and biochemical evidence of growth hormone deficiency to provocation testing. Consideration should be given to neurosecretory dysfunction of growth hormone release, where provocation testing may reveal a normal response but other evidence suggests a diagnosis of growth hormone deficiency. Human growth hormone somatotropin for the treatment of growth phyla in uh, children. Algorithm. Algorithm show uh, that the uh, growth hormone treatment may need not only patients with uh, pituitary growth hormone uh, deficiency, but also another uh, category of patients, for example, Turner syndrome, renal failure, and other uh, diseases. So, growth hormone uh, is used in dosage 
uh, which may be um, assessed by and calculated in microgram per kilogram per day or in milligram um, square metal body surface area day, during day. And in this uh, uh, picture, we see in this table, we see that uh, in uh, growth hormone deficiency, pituitary uh, problem uh, in patient health, the uh, daily doses are less than in, in other cases, for example, in case of Turner syndrome or in uh, case of chronic uh, renal uh, failure, uh, failure patients. Pituitary anterior lobe deficiency in adults. Causes of pituitary anterior lobe deficiency in adults may be different. It may be uh, pituitary causes, it's a pituitary adenoma, pituitary cyst, pituitary surgery or infiltrative lesions, uh, for example, lymphocytic hypophagitis or infarction or apoplexy and primary empty cell syndrome and metastatic disease to the cell. And patient may have hypothalamic causes, for example, mass lesion in craniopharyngioma, for example, radiation for brain malignancy, infiltrative lesion for sarcoidosis, trauma with school based fracture, and infection, uh, viral encephalitis, for example. Clinical manifestations so of pituitary anterior lobe deficiency in adults. It may be a wrinkling or myxedema phases or palo or loss of axillary uh, hair, hair or breast atrophy, low blood pressure, hypoglycemia, hyponatremia, eosinophilia, loss of uh, pubic hair. Also, genital and gonadal atrophy and amenorrhea, infertility, vaginal dryness and atrophy, decreased libido, erectile dysfunction in men, asthenia, dry skin, decreased muscle mass, and this uh, combination may be different uh, of these manifestations. There are different degrees of anterior pituitary deficiency. For example, mild anterior pituitary deficiency. Etiology of mild anterior, anterior pituitary deficiency may be pituitary adenoma, maybe post-surgical deficiency, maybe radiation therapy, lymphocytic hypophagitis, or pituitary cyst, or hypothalamic disorder. And manifestation of this mild anterior pituitary deficiency is mainly uh, with the gonadotrophic deficiency in men, uh, loss of body hair, infertility, decreased libido, depicts uh, vitality, decreased testicular size, and erectile dysfunction. In women, loss of axillary and pubic hair, amenorrhea, infertility, vaginal dryness, hot flashes, and breast atrophy. And in childhood, uh, delayed puberty, overgrowth of uh, long bones, amenorrhoides. But in case of mild deficiency, usually patient has normal TSH function, a normal ACTH function and uh, 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 MSH function, so, so uh, melanocyte stimulating hormone, uh, and gross hormone secretion is also normal. So, in case of mild uh, deficiency of pituitary, hypopit mild hypopituitary, there is uh, only a deficiency of gonadotrophic hormones. But in case of moderate anterior pituitary deficiency, again, the uh, etiology may be pituitary adenoma, post-surgical may be developed, radiation therapy, pituitary apoplexy, lymphocytic uh, hypophysitis, pituitary cyst, and hypothalamic disorders. 
And in case of uh, moderate anterior deficiency, again, patient will have deficiency of gonadotropins with uh, manifestations uh, which uh, we uh, tell uh, a little bit earlier. And uh, with the in same patients, uh, will, they will have also not only gonadotropic uh, deficiency, but TSA deficiency with manifestations of hypothyroidism. Uh, and uh, with uh, some gross impairment may result from this. And uh, also, any degree, any kind of uh, deficiency of ACTH secretion, particularly uh, not total deficiency of adrenal cortex, and uh, it will be adrenal cortical insufficiency brought on only by stress in his or operation. So, uh, and uh, again, ACTH and MSH um, uh, partially deficient to some degrees of power may be present in such cases. And also, patient may have any uh, kind of uh, uh, and degree of growth hormone deficiency in adults. It will be decreased chance of well-being and increased fat mass and decreased muscle mass. And in childhood, the growth velocity will be decreased and patient will have short stature. In case of severe anterior pituitary deficiency, it, uh, etiology may be extensive destructive macroadenoma or craniopharyngioma. Also, postpartum necrosis and occasionally trauma and post-surgical may be. If a patient had, in such cases, Patient will have uh, gross hormone deficiency, and in childhood it will be uh, manifested with a uh, uh, decreased gross velocity, short stature. In adults, uh, the decreased sense of well-being, increased fat mass, and decreased muscle mass. Uh, because of gonadotropin deficiency, uh, will uh, patient will have the uh, manifestations. Uh, and about this, uh, which mentioned uh, above. And uh, patients will have also deficiency of uh, TSH with hypothyroidism, deficiency of ACTH with adrenocortical insufficiency, and deficiency of melanocyte stimulating hormone with PALO. And in case of pan patients uh, may develop. Oh, hypopituitaries, uh, uh, because of extensive tumor, it's usually a craniopharyngioma, it may be developed post-surgical and occasionally because of trauma. And patients will have uh, gross hormone deficiency. In childhood, it will be a decreased gross velocity and short stature. In adults, sense of well-being will be decreased, decreased, and there will be a fat mass, increased fat mass, and decreased muscle mass. Because of uh, deficiency of vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone, we develop diabetes insipidus. It may be latent unless adrenal cortical hormones are present or administrated. And uh, in, uh, because of uh, uh, deficiency of gonadotropins, developed hypogonadism in men and in women, and also hypothyroidism because of TSH deficiency. And uh, ACTH deficiency will result adrenal cortical insufficiency. And melanocyte stimulates the hormone deficiency, and the ACTH deficiency will result pallor. Postpartum pituitary infarction, Trehan syndrome. Pathogenesis of Trehan syndrome, it's postpartum hemorrhage, which results rapid drop in blood pressure and uh, thrombosis, <coughs> necrosis, and scar formation. Rim of relatively normal tissue. In such cases, patients will develop deficiency of pituitary, hypopituitary. And uh, clinical manifestations of Sheehan syndrome, pituitary insufficiency of variable degree, usually without diabetes insipidus, which 
patient will have. For example, because of prolactin deficiency, develop high level of uh, lactation, often first sign of in postpartum, and uh, ACTA deficiency will result adrenal cortical insufficiency, and FSH and LA deficiency will result gonadal insufficiency, aminorrhea, and TSH deficiency may, may, will result hypothyroidism. Pituitary apoplexy may also result the uh, hypopituitaries. Usually, pituitary apoplexy develop in case of pituitary adenoma, and the, the hemorrhage will develop in area of this adenoma. And uh, hemorrhage mass uh, will uh, result compression uh, surround the tissue. Or for example, it may result compression of optic uh, chiasm, or uh, maybe result compression of cranial nerve. For example, in this picture, we see uh, the ptosis of uh, right uh, lip because of uh, compression of uh, third uh, cranial nerve 3. Gross hormone deficiency may develop in adults, may have adult persons. Gross hormone is Frequently, one of the first hormones affected in patients with hypopituitarism. In practical endocrinology, there are encountered adult patients who have growth hormone deficiency due to hypothalamic pituitary disorders alone or in combination with other anterior pituitary hormone deficiency. In approximately 10% of adults with growth hormone deficiency, the condition will have developed in childhood, and awareness of these patients among healthcare professionals is generally good. But there is a need for better recognition and awareness of the remaining 90% uh, remaining, uh, who have adult onset gross hormone deficiency. Adult gross hormone deficiency is now a well-recognized clinical entity. It's characterized by the variable presence of non-specific features such as depressed mood and lack of energy positive well-being, changes in a body composition, metabolic complications affecting blood glucose and cholesterol level, and cardiovascular complications. The presence of these features can depend on factors such as time or onset of growth hormone deficiency in childhood or in adult, and gender. It is important to recognize that growth hormone deficiency in adults is typically caused by structural hypothalamic hypothalamic pituitary disease, such as pituitary adenoma, or cranial irradiation, and uh, therefore often occurs along with additional features of hypopituitarism. Hypopituitarism is associated with increased all-cause mortality as compared with control populations, as compared with control populations, and especially mortality from cardio and cerebrovascular disease. Other studies have shown excess morbidity due to type 2 diabetes, cerebral infarction, and sepsis in patients with non-functioning pituitary adenomas. Symptoms and features of gross hormone deficiency in adults. It's a cardiovascular complications, for example, accelerated heterogenesis, decreased cardiac muscle mass, impaired cardiac function, and metabolic complications, such as increased blood glucose level, diabetes, or increased blood level of LDL cholesterol, and also it may be manifestation as a quality of life, depressed mode, increased anxiety, uh, lack of energy, reduced exercise capacity, social isolation, 
lack of positive well-being, and also body composition changes, increased body, especially abdominal fat, decreased muscle mass, and decreased bone density, increased fracture risk. Incidence and prevalence of growth hormone deficiency. A nationwide, nationwide study in Denmark estimated an incidence rate for adult onset growth hormone deficiency of 1.4 to 1.9 cases annually per 100,000 people and rising to 107 to 200, the 2. Uh, I, I'm sorry, rising to 1.7 to 2.6 cases per 100,000 when adults with childhood onset growth hormone deficiency are added. The estimated prevalence is 2 to 3 patients per 10,000 population. Considering both adult onset growth hormone deficiency and childhood onset uh, disease persisting into adulthood. Possible causes of growth hormone deficiency in adults. There are many possible causes of growth hormone deficiency in adults. Pituitary adenomas and craniopharyngiomas, either the tumors themselves or their treatment. And uh, these are among the most common causes of adult onset growth hormone deficiency, uh, accounting for approximately 60% of cases in some series. So, uh, among uh, another cause, maybe genetic causes and uh, brain structure, uh, structural defects or pituitary and hypothalamic regions, adenoma, craniopharyngioma, and so on, and metastatic tumor, pituitary surgery, radiotherapy, trauma, and so on. Diagnosis of adult growth hormone deficiency. A diagnosis of growth hormone deficiency is based on a subnormal rise in peak serum growth hormone level in response to a growth hormone stimulation test. The first step in the diagnostic process is consideration of who should be tested. And current recommendations indicate that adults with evidence of hypothalamic pituitary disease and in whom there is an intention to treat with recombinant human growth hormone should be tested. This with signs and symptoms of hypothalamic pituitary disease, endocrine structural and or genetic causes should be tested and those who have received cranial irradiation or tumor treatment and those with Traumatic brain injury or subarachnoid, subarachnoid hemorrhage testing for growth hormones should be undertaken no sooner than 12 months after injury. And there is an exception. For example, patients with three and more pituitary hormone deficiencies and IGF-1 below the reference range do not need to undergo a stimulation test as the likelihood of having growth hormone deficiency is very high, more than 97%. A number of growth hormone uh, stimulation tests are validated for use in adults. The responses to all growth hormone stimulation tests are subject to inter-individual variability and growth hormone and the growth hormone cut points that apply depends on the tests which are used. All of the available tests also have some limitations which may influence the choice of tests used from, for some patients. Obesity is an important consideration when interpreting the results from most growth hormone stimulation tests. For the growth hormone releasing hormone uh, uh, with arginine test, the growth hormone cut points are dependent on body mass, uh, mass index. 
the uh, stimulation test with insulin, insulin tolerant test. It's a, a cut point of growth hormone peak and uh, the uh, contraindication should be consider the history of epileptic seizure, coronary heart disease, pregnancy, they are the contraindications and all, all the age of this are contraindications for uh, insulin tolerant test. And uh, potential adverse effect may be seizures, loss of consciousness, and uh, other limitations that requires close medical supervision. In another case, uh, we can use growth hormone stimulation test with growth hormone realistic hormone to gather with arginine. And uh, these are different cut points of growth hormone peak when a uh, patient has different uh, body mass index. And there are some contraindications when a patient have allergy to growth hormone, realistic hormone, analog, and arginine. Uh, and there are mm, uh, potential adverse effects for nausea, a headache, transmitted hypertension, and also other limitations maybe because fast negative result due to direct stimulation of somatotroph by JNRH in hypothalamic growth hormone deficiency patients with previous cranial radiation therapy or hypothalamic tumor. In uh, any cases, uh, we can use glucagon stimulation test. In glucagon stimulation test, uh, growth hormone cut points are in peak uh, so when it's less than 3 microgram per liter, uh, it uh, indicates that there is no result of stimulation. In contraindications, maybe um, uh, malnourished patients or those who have not eaten for 40, more than 48 hours, and fasting hyperglycemia if patient has uh, blood glucose level more than 180 milligram per deciliter, it also uh, is contraindications. Potential adverse effect for the glucagon stimulating test is nausea, vomiting, headache. And other limitations also, maybe uh, the uh, test has long uh, duration, uh, duration, about three to four hours, and requires intramuscular injection of this glucagon. Hyperpituitarism. Pituitary gigantism and acromegaly. PMRE, you can see photo of PMRE, uh, the noted French neurologist who was the first to collect this systematically analyze the condition coining the term acromegaly, publishing his initial observation in 1886. In this picture, we can see Harvey Cushing's first case of, acromeg of surgery for acromegaly in 1909. The, uh, this is a photo of patients as a young man, and the, another photo at presentation with acromegaly. It was the first patient who was operated um, by the Cushing. And in this picture, again, uh, the Harry Cushing with patient uh, uh, with acromegaly. Gigantism and acromegaly are usually caused by a pituitary adenoma that secretes excessive amount of growth hormone. Rarely, they are caused by non-pituitary tumors that secrete growth hormone, releasing hormone growth. Gigantism refers to abnormally high linear growth due to excessive action of insulin-like growth factors, IGF-1, while the epiphyseal growth plates are open during childhood. And acromegaly is the same disorder of IGF-1, but uh, excess with, uh, of IGF-1 excess, but 
Of course, after the growth, plate, cartilage, forces in adulthood. In this picture, we can see a mm, uh, pituitary giant contrasted with average sized man. The effects of the chronic growth hormone excess include acrid and soft tissue overgrowth, coarsening of facial features, prognathism, frontal bossing, and progressive dental malocclusis. And uh, this is a picture of patient with acromegaly. In this picture, we can see uh, pituitary macroadenoma, which results in acromegaly. In another picture, MRI shows a large growth hormone secreting pituitary tumor in a 16 years old adolescent boy with gigantism. And again, MRI shows a 2.1 a centimeter pituitary macroadenoma eroding the shallow flow on the right, extending into the right cavernous sinus, and extending to the optic height above the thalla turcica. Here we can see MRI shows pituitary macroadenoma extending into the sphenoid sinus, sinus and suprasellar region. In this picture, we can see different uh, mechanisms of developing of um, acromegaly and gigantes. And what about epidemiology of acromegaly gigantes? Incidence is among 2.8 <coughs> uh, and 6.0 cases per million per year. Prevalence in regional case series is about 38 to 75 cases uh, per million. And uh, cross-sectional population studies show one case per 6,000 to 8,000 population. And uh, in case of biochemical screening studies, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's diagnosed in one case per 1,000 population. And the sex distribution is the same in male and in female. Age at diagnosis is among 40 to 50 years. Time from first symptoms to diagnosis. In past time, uh, it was a very long time, from 7 to 10 years. But um, uh, in recent period, the diagnosis <clears throat> uh, it made uh, earlier and the time from the first symptoms to diagnosis nowadays is about 3.2 years. Clinical signs and symptoms in acromegaly and gigantism. The presentation of patients with gigantism is usually dramatic unlike the insidious onset of acromegaly in adults. And manifestation include the following. Tall stature, mild to moderate obesity, macrocephaly may precede the linear growth, headache, visual changes, hypopituitarism, soft tissue hypertrophy, Exaggerated growth of the hands and feet with thin fingers and toes, coarse facial features, frontal bossing, prognathism, and hyperhidrosis. Another manifestation of gigantism, gigantism may be osteoarthritis, it's a late feature of IGF 1 excess. And peripheral neuropathy, for example, carpal tunnel syndrome, cardiovascular disease, maybe benign tumors, maybe, and endocrinopathies. In acromegaly, signs and symptoms of acromegaly include the following 
Doubly feeling skin over the face and extremities, thick and hard nails, deeping of creases on the forehead and the nasal label folds, noticeable large pores, thick and edematous eyelids, enlargement of the lower lip and nose, wide spacing of the teeth and pragmatism, cutis vertis virata, small sessile and pedunculate fibromas, hypertrichosis, a oil skin, but acne is not common. In acromegaly we can see also hyperpigmentation, about 40% of the patients, acanthosis nigricans, it's real, and excessive crying and apocrine sweating. Breast tissue became atrophic and uh, may develop galactorrhea, and high blood pressure, mitrovalvular regurgitation, and mild hirsutism in women. And treatment of patients with acromegaly aims of treatment. Principal aims of acromegaly treatment are to control the biochemical abnormalities of the disease, control growth of the tumor mass, and prevent compressive signs due to it. Elevate acromegaly associated signs, uh, symptoms, and comorbidities and return mortality to that expected for this patient. When <coughs> diagnosis of acromegaly is established, we should decide how to treat. There is two uh, possible uh, modes of treatment, the surgery and primary medical therapy. Surgery may be used in microadenoma and in macroadenoma, but uh, if patient has poor surgical risk or patient has macroadenoma with cavernous sinus, sinus invasion, in such cases, the uh, surgery may be contraindicated. Usually, nowadays, uh, the um, uh, are, are, is the used transphenoid surgery, but in case uh, when uh, in cases when uh, the surgery is contraindicated, uh, maybe use somatostatin analogs. Analogs. In transphenoidal surgery, we can get good result after surgery. Gross hormone became less than one, IGF one became normal. So. It indicates the good result, but the patients need further monitoring. But maybe uh, the, another result after surgery. Gross hormone stay in high level more than one, and IGF-1 is elevated. In such cases, we should use somastatin analogs or uh, dopamine uh, ergic drugs or maybe radiotherapy. In case of somatostatin analog treatment, uh, when we use, when in patients which uh, <clears throat> have contraindication for surgery, uh, somatostatin analog treatment may get good results with uh, uh, the decrease uh, with the low growth hormone uh, level with less than one and IGF-1 well, became normal. Such patients need uh, other treatment and monitoring. <coughs> if uh, we decide uh, to treat patient with the uh, uh, drug with the somatostatin analogos or dopamine uh, agonists or uh, radiotherapy after um, uh, surgery when we don't get enough good results. Uh, 
patient may have no enough good effect. For example, the growth hormone level is more than one, and IGF-1 is elevated. In such cases, we should combine somatostatin analogs and dopamine uh, drug drugs. In uh, case when uh, we uh, use combination of somatostatin analogs and dopamine uh, agonists, uh, may be also uh, different results. For example, the one of them may be full biochemical response in combination therapy with uh, normalization of growth hormone level and IGF uh, level. Uh, IGF-1 level, oh, in such cases, uh, we should continue treatment and monitor this patient. And maybe uh, uh, the another result, no biochemical response. Um, and in such cases, uh, we should use uh, growth hormone antagonists alone and uh, if uh, IGF-1 became normal, we should uh, continue treatment and monitor. In, in other cases, when uh, we have only partial biochemical response, we can use somatostatin analogs together with um, growth hormone antagonists. And if in such case the IGF-1 Remain mm, uh, stay uh, in the high level. The we can add uh, radio uh, radiation therapy. In treatment with of somatotropinoma, acromegaly or gigantes, uh, as we, uh, we had possibility, we had possibility to see there are the different example, transphenoidal surgery. It's expensive, but results rapid decrease in IGF-1 and growth hormone. And uh, but uh, mm, at the same time, the remission rate is among 20 to 80 percent, and the recurrence rate is uh, to uh, three to 10 percent over five years. And hypopituitarism may develop after surgery. In case of medical treatment, medicamental treatment, for example, somatostatin analogs, analogs, the mm, uh, advantage is a 50% normal IGF-1 and growth hormone. And in 42% is the treatment may result tumor shrinkage and uh, no disease hypothyroidism development. The Gentragic is the, uh, that uh, this uh, somatostatin analog treatment is very expensive, about uh, 20,000 uh, euros per year, which is very expensive, and uh, at last it needs monthly intramuscular, uh, monthly intramuscular injection. In case of uh, pegvisomant, treatment. It's a uh, drug which results of the uh, block, blockade of uh, receptors of uh, growth hormone. And in 75% uh, it results normalization of IGF-1 and uh, no, uh, there is no risk to develop additional hypopituitarism. But again, this pegvisomant uh, treatment is very expensive, about 60,000 euros in a year, and uh, it needs daily subcutaneous injections, and don't result in the tumor shrinkage. Patients may treat with combination of somatostatin analogs and uh, pegvisomant. In such cases, advantage is that the 90% normalization of IGF-1 and uh, may result this treatment tumor shrinkage, but uh, no additional hypopituitarism, so it's a good 
uh, and the possible improved quality of life in some patients. The disadvantages is at last cost neutral compared to pegvisomant monotherapy. So it uh, again is enough expensive. And the last uh, treatment, the radiotherapy. It's an external beam radio surgery. It's uh, an exp inexpensive, but without high frequency of hypopituitary, low efficacy rates, decreased quality of life, potentially increased incidence of cardiovascular events. And prolactinoma as a cause of syndrome of primary hyperprolactinemia. In a uh, case of prolactinoma and hypersecretion of prolactin, <coughs> in premenopausal women, hyperprolactinemia causes bilateral spontaneous galactorrhea, different degrees. Also, the patients have mass effect symptoms in case of macroprolactinoma, uh, it, uh, which include visual field defect with supracellular extension, cranial nerve pulses with lateral cavernous sinus extension, uh, diplopia, ptosis, headaches, and varying degrees of hypopituitary. The patients also uh, have the hypogonadism and infertility and uh, oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea uh, in females and uh, erectile dysfunction, oligospermia, infertility in males. In MRI scan, we can see here uh, the data of patients with the 9 mm prolactin secreting pituitary microadenoma at the time of diagnosis, the serum prolactin concentration was 208 nanogram per milliliter. And the uh, uh, MRI of the same patients, after six months uh, of uh, normalization, uh, the prolactin level because of uh, dopamine agonist treatment. And the size of the prolactinoma decreased more than 50%. So uh, dopamine agonists uh, in this case result the uh, reduction of uh, adenoma uh, and the reduction of adenoma size and also normalization of uh, galactoria. No, oh, I'm sorry, the <coughs> prolactin level. It's uh, another case of uh, hyperprolactinemia and uh, macroprolactinoma. Uh, patient had 6.5 centimeter prolactin secretic pituitary macroadenoma. There are scattered uh, sized skilled areas within the mass, the largest in the right. The patient present with visual field defects and secondary hypogonadism. And baseline serum prolactin concentration was very high, 6,100 nanograms per milliliter. And the same patient, after six months, after normalization of the serum prolactin concentration with a dopamine agonist. And uh, we see dramatic shrinkage on the MRI uh, and visual field defect result and pituitary function returned to the normal. So we can finish the second part of this lecture. Thank you for attention.